And because there is just so much damn talent uh, in the SEC, uh, we're going to go back to the SEC now just because they've done so well. A team that, by all accounts, may have a top five class in the country, if not higher. Um, Texas A&M. They've done pretty well. Texas A&M, as you look at this, and, and this is, of course, good bull hunting. It's their territory. But uh, Speedy Noyle, the name does not lie. Kyle Allen, your number one quarterback. I think pretty much everybody's number yep. one quarterback in the country. Uh, they address a number of needs on both sides of the ball because it is their, it, it's a program with a lot in flux, losing Johnny Manziel, losing Mike Evans, and then defensively struggling like they did this past season. Uh, Texas A&M has recruited the hell out of the state of Texas. Not an accident, not a, a mistake when Texas has struggled and has gone through the changes that they've gone through. Yep. Texas A&M, you have the, the fluid, the fluidity, the, the, the continuity, excuse me, with the coaching staff. Uh, Texas A&M, where are they strong? Who are the names? And uh, how are they nationally? You know, I, I think they're a certainly top 10 class. One of the, we just got done talking to our Michigan blogger uh, about how Michigan has an extremely high star average. Right. Texas A&M does as well. A really great blend uh, of, of, of guys who are, are just extremely talented and they filled their needs. Um, I know we have Speedy listed first, and then we obviously have Kyle Allen. Miles Garrett is, yes. is awesome. Like I, I did not realize until I got to Under Armour uh, with, with the practices out there at the All Star Game, just how how big this guy is. And yeah. I, I know Jeremy Fowler for CBS reported that he was uh, 260 plus pounds uh, w when he checked in Texas A&M. This guy is awesome. I think he's probably the best defensive end in the country. Do we want to break here? Or do we want to talk about Adoree coming to the USC live? Or? Oh, Adoree, yeah, that he is does. breaking news. Adoree Jackson, the uh, the corner who played his uh, his high school ball in Southern California, but is from the Midwest, Indeed. decides in to stay to stay in Southern California. I believe he went to Sarah yeah. High School, which has been shocking. Enormous. They would send a player to USC. Shockingly, so that's been a pipeline. Adoree Jackson uh, right now commits on ESPNU to USC. So that's that's big news. Yeah, that, that really is. Adoree, and I know we'll talk more on our 5 o'clock show. That's a yes. plug. Uh, plug. If, if you want to come back for Pac-12 and Big 12 uh, yeah. coverage. But Adoree is a guy that can really make a true impact on special teams, at corner, even at receiver some. I, I know he picked USC over uh, LSU mm -hmm. and Florida, also previously considered uh, you know uh, Tennessee, Tennessee and FSU yeah. and some other spots. But uh, a truly special athlete, loves to compete too, uh, and just a, a really a transcendent player in, in this class, a guy I really like. But we'll We'll get back to talk about Texas A&M. Yeah, I'm sure Texas A&M would love him. Yeah, yeah, no, yes. by all means. That's yeah, a they, good they break. could use him. I'm sure Texas A&M would love Adoree Jackson as well. Um, so when you look at this class, it's it's speedy. You were talking about Miles Garrett and how well he carries that Instant weight. Instant impact at defensive end. Right. I mean, a guy who could be number one overall draft pick in three years. Wow. I'm serious. Like, like just that 6'5", 260, the frame to probably play that So true... a similar size that Clowney came I don't know, first step wise, yeah. I haven't seen anybody that quick right off the line, but in terms of frame and size. Not quite as long as Clowney, not right. quite the first step. I would say more power. Better okay. against the run immediately than Clowney was against the run. Sure. Clowney is, there's not a Clowney every year. There's probably no. not a Clowney it's every decade, a generation. to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think, or, or, I said hand, excuse me. Uh, yeah. Garrett's going to immediately make an impact for them. Speedy Noel is a guy who I was extremely impressed with that un, at Under Armour uh, because he plays quarterback in high school. Yeah. And, and a little bit of running back. They do some stuff like that with some of the zone read stuff. And, he does a great job in, in the New Orleans area. But how do you evaluate a guy's receiver skills? You it's true. Of, you can look at his, his athleticism, his agility, his speed. Uh, but how do you look at his adjustments to the ball, his ability to get open, his ability to run routes? He's a little bit more raw than some other receivers in this class. But I was extremely impressed at how far along he was when I saw him at Under Armour, given that he plays quarterback. He, he made several really nice plays on some jump balls, which mm -hmm. is impressive for a guy who's you know, probably 5'10", 5'11", off the top of my head, uh, and, and got open, ran better routes than I expected. I think he's going to catch a lot of balls and make a lot of big plays in the SEC immediately for Texas A&M. Yeah, and especially now that Mike Evans is gone, so there's a, an open spot. And they've, they've actually recruited Texas A&M, the wide receiver position, really well. Ricky Seals-Jones will be back from his injury. Exactly. Uh, and and the, the fact that Speedy Noyle did play quarterback, uh, it makes it tougher to evaluate. And he is, like, by far, not by far, but he's everybody's number one receiver and or athlete. And we have uh, the, the highlights here on, they on, do on, not on, lie. on Speedy. Yeah, he is uh, extremely good. I'm sure LSU fans not real happy to see him wearing that color or the, those no. colors and him signing with uh, right. with Texas A&M. A New Orleans product. But here, l l let's try and evaluate this guy a as a receiver because he's playing some quarterback and playing some, some running back in his right. own read scheme. I mean, here we see the breakaway speed, of course. Uh, he's totally smoking all these guys. Right. on, And this is not a bad league. Again, no. this is, you know, New Orleans plays good football. Yep. Uh, and does the nice little track. Uh, <laughs> the lean. <yep. laughs> the lean to break the tape. Yep. Um, 
Here we go again. Nice agility to the outside. Shows that, that good lateral and quickness the there. Exactly. And the ability to, to put your foot in the ground, stop, and, and then change direction, which is very much what you need to do when you run routes. You, know, yep. you go hard, you present the same look off the line of scrimmage every time to that defensive back, and then mm -hmm. you, you put your foot in the ground, you change, and you run a different route. Uh, there was a throw. He's not going to be throwing a whole lot probably for Texas A&M, although right. a cool guy to feature on a, on a trick play perhaps. And yeah. a lefty. That's actually cool. Most teams you don't, don't expect a guy to throw a ball left-handed. Most right. trick plays will go to a guy that throws right-handed. A lefty could fool a defense here. That's yep. kind of cool. Absolutely. And and he, especially within that Kevin Sumlin offense, creative ways to get him the ball yep. quickly, not just in space, but somebody that can bounce outside, bounce inside, and, yes, will run specialty packages. And it also reminds me, uh, Michael Crabtree, high school quarterback. Um, it, it's, you know, you don't just immediately say. Deion Sanders, Michael high Jack school quarterback. Yes. You, you still see this sometimes because – it's so effective. And Juan Bolden. To, like, th this is not exactly. an accident. Yeah. You, you, in high school, a lot of times, unless you're on a team that's totally loaded, you want to put the ball in, in your playmaker's hands. And what, what player touches the ball in every single play? The quarterback. I guess yep. the center, too. But you don't see a lot of playmakers at center. Um, but, yeah, I think he's going to be really, really good for them. A guy who was further along than I expected him to be. And then if Kyle Allen wins that job, a guy that Allen's really going to appreciate throwing the football to. All right. And fair enough. It's time to talk to Good Bull Hunting. I, Good Bull Hunting is, they do such a fantastic job uh, with all things Texas A&M. You have all sorts of what appears to be made up names, or they just have terrific luck in finding terrific, <laughs> I'm saying terrific a lot today. They have good luck finding writers with weird names. Uh, we now bring in Orion H. Jarvis. Orion, can you hear me? Right, loud and clear. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful thing. How are things down in Texas? It's good. I got to say, I take exception as a center in high school. I take an exception to the comment that centers aren't playmakers on the high school level. <laughs> well, you know, the play doesn't start without you. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Fair enough. All right. Uh, Orion, how do you evaluate when you look at the, the class in front of you today that appears to be pretty much all set? How do you evaluate the needs that have been addressed, the value of the kids being brought in, and who do you expect to... Uh, to compete immediately for a, a Texas A&M team that is in a fantastic place right now in college football? You know, overall, I, I, I think it's, it's definitely arguably one of the best classes that Texas A&M has ever signed. You lose Johnny Manziel and Mike Evans, and you replace them with a Kyle Allen and Speedy Knoll. I mean, you really can't do much better than that. Um, <clears throat> on a defensive front that could get no pressure, Last year, you bring in arguably the number one player in the country and Miles Garrett out of Ar Arlington Martin, mm -hmm. the two best defensive tackles in the state of Texas. You signed both of those guys, and you were able to go get a couple of defensive ends, one Jared Johnson from Katy and Quaylen Cunningham from Arizona. So you definitely addressed those needs. The only two positions really that, that weren't addressed in this class were safety and, and middle linebacker, you know, the late defection of Dylan Sumner Gardner following Coach Ace to Boise State really hurt. And Kenny Young choosing to go to UCLA today was, is something that really, the sore thumb, I guess you could say, for this class, two positions that A&M really needed to fill, an inside linebacker and a safety. Yeah, and Matra McGrew also commits to Oregon. And we should also mention Ho sure. Jose Scott, who I think would be very high on that, on that board, on mm -hmm. that graphic that we just showed, uh, ended up not signing with Texas A&M because of, uh, of academics. Uh, and that, that's a real disappointment because he is yeah. clearly one of the best linebackers in the entire country, easily one of the four or five best. All right, and Orion, when you look at the, the sort of depth of this class, perhaps names not uh, immediately going to compete. Obviously, sometimes kids just need to put on weight, take off weight, just sort of gain polish and experience in a system. What are some names you're looking forward to seeing how they developed, whether it's 2015, 16, 17? You know, I think the, the offensive linemen from the high school level that, that a and brought in, you look at Coda Martin, mm -hmm. is Zach Legway. Guys, uh, Tank Johnson, Kelvin Johnson are guys that are going to need a few years, like most high school seniors do that play on the offensive line, are going to need a couple of years in the strength program and a, mm -hmm. and a meal program at the college level. Those guys are, are guys that you're going to look for two years ago that are going to add some quality depth to this squad and, and compete for, for starting jobs down the road. That's just development as a, as a former offensive lineman myself who I'll really be paying attention to. All right, I want to ask a question about Kyle Allen, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. How good is he now to your eyes to immediately come in and compete? Obviously, Texas A&M has quarterbacks on the roster. Kyle Allen, though, the overwhelming, it seems, number one quarterback in the country, uh, comes from Arizona, not the highest level of competition, but quickly growing. We see, you know, Brett Hundley succeeding at UCLA coming out of that area. Kyle Allen, how ready is he to, to immediately make an impact, if at all, for Texas A&M? 
completely ready. And what makes Kyle Allen so great is his footwork and his mechanics from the high school level, and it makes him – he is deadly accurate. And just like Case Keenum, that's exactly what Kevin Sumlin and mm-hmm. Jake Spavadol are looking for in this offense. Uh, he's a, he is a legitimate – option to be the starting quarterback for Texas A&M next year. It's going to be very interesting to watch he and, and sophomore Kenny Hill push each other and see who eventually comes out on top. But to answer your question, Kyle Allen is by, by far the best quarterback A&M's ever recruited. Uh, you know, even Johnny Manziel wasn't was, – he was a four-star on, on some boards. But, right. But not all. But, yeah, he's in a league of his own, and he definitely has the tools and what exactly what Coach – someone ex all are looking for. And to add to that, I actually ran into Kyle Allen's personal quarterback coach, Dennis Guile, who's based out of Arizona. He does a lot of the stuff with Elite 11, and mm-hmm. I, I was updating our scouting reports the other week, and I, I called Dennis, and I said, Dennis, what is Kyle Allen's weakness? Right. And he said, I, I'm not trying to sound you know, like a homer here, but really he's he doesn't really have one from a high school perspective. Right. I mean, the only question is how quickly will he be able to pick up the offense and and manage a team as the quarterback in, in college because mechanically he's, he's the best I've ever had. He throws a great ball. He has plenty of arm strength, good build, uh, you know, kid who leads his high school team well. He, he, he said it just wouldn't be fair for me to really say this kid has a weakness because in high school he's one of the best they've seen. And to, to add to your addition, um, Kevin Sumlin has done a fantastic job crafting offensive systems Indeed. to his personnel. So maybe it's not overly complex with Kyle Allen. Maybe, it, you know, tailored towards getting the ball as quickly out of his hands as possible to the talent they've amassed around Kyle Allen. That makes sense to me. Uh, Orion Jarvis, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of what, a, what sounds like a car ride, and uh, enjoy this class, and be hopeful, as we all are, that uh, the defensive recruits come in and make a, a quicker impact than a, a, a delayed one. For my sanity, they're going to have to. Thanks, guys. <laughs> appreciate it. Fair enough. Thank you again. Um, Texas A&M doing a fantastic job, Kevin Sumlin, and appears to be doing a great job even looking beyond the class of 2014. Everything just seems to have gone right for them in the last couple of years. They, yes. they, they, they get to move to the SEC. That Some of the teams in the SEC West were a little bit down when, when they came in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, clearly, they, they, Auburn was not a power two years ago when, when they went on that great run right. uh, when, when Johnny Football won the Heisman. Uh, Mac Brown, towards the end of his run there at Texas, did not recruit very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, I think that they will face stiffer competition on the recruiting trail when Charlie Strong gets that thing up and running. But right now, A&M is recruiting Texas better than it's ever done. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous, and they are doing a fantastic job.